You know, uh, so thankful, and and I see real people here. I've been in churches where the people are there, and they're not real. They're not real, and I believe that you, the congregation here, loves the Word of God, and by the Word of God, I'm sure you know what I mean, the Authorized Version 1611 King James Bible, uh, and you want to learn it, I want to encourage you, I exhort you, I, I plead with you, I beg you to get a schedule of reading. There's two things that you need to do. You need to read the Bible, and you need to study the Bible. It's two different things. And you need to set time aside for each one. I don't care if it's only 20 minutes a day for each one. That's 40 minutes out of your day. Uh, what's that? You can find that time. And uh, if you don't know how to study, there's plenty of information your pastor can give you, uh, other men in the church can give you. Uh, you can go on the internet, but you've got to be careful. There's everything on that internet, and some of it's not right, so uh, be careful with that. And uh, I, had, I had five different ways to go this morning, and, and uh, your pastor says, are you ready? I says, I'm never ready. And he says, I know, you're never ready till you get there. <laughs> And, and that's, that's how it works. But uh, I, I want to encourage you to uh, read Romans 6 over and over because that chapter will give you the way to have victory and live a Christian life uh, throughout your, your life. And you can live in victory um, uh, by knowing just a couple things. I'm going to go this way. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear preachers say, God spoke to me and said, uh, do that. God didn't speak to me. And, and as I told them last night, the people we were with, anytime somebody tells me that God spoke to me, uh, I'll ask him, was it a male or a female voice that you heard? You know, uh, God speaks to us through his word. You know, he may, may have somebody come and, and say something to you and you'll, you'll wonder, Lord, you trying to tell me something? Uh, should I go this way? Should I go that way? But what I want to do is, is give you God's formula because I think you people and I don't like that term, you people, uh, but, you know, all of us, we need this. Romans chapter 6, uh, you'll find God's uh, formula how to have victory in this life. And we won't, we won't read the whole chapter, although it's important to do that, but the formula is three words, know, reckon, and yield. And you're to know something. Uh, I'll give you the, uh, the, the answer first and then we'll cover uh, the rest of it. You're to know, first of all, that your body is dead. Okay, to spiritual things. Uh, and, and I'll cover that in a minute and I'll explain that. We're to reckon, we're to reckon some things. Reckon means to bring it into account, to, to realize ease that it's true. And then you're to yield, you're to yield. And we'll cover all these as we go through this. So you need to pay attention uh, to this part, mark it down if you're taking notes, remember it. Romans chapter 6 is the most important book in, in, uh, in the Bible and the most important chapter to claim victory in your life. <clears throat> now, I'm talking, I'm talking to saved people. If there happens to be someone in here that is not saved, I want to I cover this first so that your blood 
is not on my hands. And at the white throne judgment, when you stand before God Almighty, you will not be able to point to me and say that he never told me. So by being born again, to become a child of God, you first of all have to hear the word of God. Okay, the word of God tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So every one of us, once we, we come to realize we're sinning against God, that's when we're, we're due to drop into hell if we die. Okay, and once we hear this, okay, so I'm a sinner, what, what now? You have to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. That's Almighty God who came down. You heard that in Sunday school. That's God manifest in the flesh. He came down in the form of Jesus Christ. He lived a perfect, holy, righteous life, 33 and a half years in his human form. And as, as his Sunday school teacher taught us, he was tempted in every way. He tempted more than you and I will ever be tempted. But yet, he did not yield to that temptation. He did not sin. And, and when, when Satan took him up on the mountain and said, all these kingdoms I will give you, bow down and worship me, he refused. So he lived a sinless, perfect life. And then he was tortured beaten, whipped, went to the cross, had those crowns of thorn, and those crowns, those thorns in, in that part of the world, uh, from what I've read, are at least an inch long. And they were beaten on his, on his uh, uh, head. He shed his blood. He was crucified, bleeding for you. And the Bible tells us that the blood of Christ is the only thing that can wash your sins away. And without that blood, you're, you're, you remain a sinner and you're destined for an eternity in, in hell and then taken up to the white throne judgment and cast into the lake of fire. And if you've ever studied or learned about what that torment, that torture, that pain is like, you, you just can't, we can't grasp it. We can try to, but for an example, if, if you took your hand and, and put it into a hot fire and, and they held it there, uh, the, the amount of pain as, as your flesh is burned away. But in eternity, you're not gonna burn away. You're gonna remain and you're gonna be in torment for all eternity. And that's a choice that people make. i rather live, please myself, rather than accept the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for me. So you hear the word. Jesus Christ came. He's God manifest in the flesh. He shed his blood. The blood of Christ is the only thing that can wash your sins away. Then he was buried. And after three days, he rose from the dead. Now, he rose under his own power. He rose under the power of the Father, and he rose under the power of the Holy Spirit, proving that he is God. And then, of course, he ascended into heaven. So it comes to the point in your life where you're going to have to make a decision. Do I believe what the Word of God says, that Jesus Christ took my sin? He took your sin. He took my sin. He took my sin. All my sins, my past, my present, my future sins, all of them, they're all gone. Why? Because I placed my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He deposited my sins in hell. I'm free. That's why I can enjoy life. I know my sins are gone. I know I don't have to answer for them. What I do have to answer for is the things I do in this life that are not what I'm supposed to do. Uh, <clears throat> if I sin, Galatians 6, 7 comes into view. You're going to reap what you sow. 
And you do not want to reap at the judgment seat of Christ when you, you're standing there and you're, what you've done goes through that refining fire and you see it burned up. I believe that's going to be the terror of the Lord that it talks about because you see your, your uh, works being burned up and those could all be crowns where you could be serving the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennial reign and on into eternity. And that's another subject. We won't get into that now. But uh, I just want to make sure that you understand clearly and plainly what it means to be born again, to have your sins forgiven. And then, then from that point on, you can move on, enjoy life, rejoice because your sins are gone, and know uh, that, that you're going to be with the Lord one day. Now, people will say, yeah, uh, I'm saved, so what difference does it make how I live? As I said, that judgment seat of Christ is going to matter a whole lot. Look ahead. I want as many crowns as I can possibly get. Is that selfish of me? Yeah, it is. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I want, I want to win all I can win. And if you, you, you play a sport and you don't care if you win, you're going to lose. You're a loser. But I'm going to play to win. Uh, example, uh, Sue has heard this and Frank has. I study Krav Maga, which is a Jewish, what they teach the Jewish uh, uh, special forces. And it's unarmed defense against weapons, knives, guns, clubs, whatever. The instructor uh, had the knife, and I, I had her arm on the ground. And uh, I bit her arm so she would release the knife. Now, I didn't break skin. It wasn't for that. But you do whatever it takes to earn the rewards, okay? Uh, and, and that, that uh, type of... Uh, defense is for on the street. It's not tournament fighting. So anything goes. Okay. And it's the same. If you get that idea, living the Christian life, that anything goes within scripture bounds so you can win that crowns. And if you want to win the crowns, you're obedient to the word of God. You're witnessing. You're reading. You're studying. You're applying what you've learned to your life so that you have a testimony that is clear, plain, unblemished, and you, you move on for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it took us a little off track, but uh, it's important, I think. So, Romans uh, chapter 6, first thing you need to know is the word no. Romans 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, from this point on, uh, we should not serve sin. Any of us that are born again should not serve sin. We have a choice. It's your choice. You want to serve sin, enjoy that for a season? then expect to reap what you sow. Uh, so be careful of the decisions that you make. And the expression occurs in Ephesians 4, verses 22 through 24. Here's what we're to do. That you put off concerning, concerning the former conversation. Now, conversation is not just your speaking. It's your lifestyle so that you put off your old lifestyle, the things you used to do before you were saved, the old man, that's what we're referring to, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How are you going to be renewed? 
only by getting God's word into your mind. Uh, remember, and, and many of you know that song, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear, because it goes into your mind and your mind processes that stuff. <sighs> Example, how many of you remember the songs when you were a kid or when you were young, teenagers? And they stick in your mind, but how does Bible stick in your mind? You can read that over and over, and you can't remember one thing to the next. And it's unbelievable. But the things of the world are in there, so you don't, don't allow the things of the world to go into your mind, because then that's what you're going to think on. And when you start thinking on it, what's going to happen? The more and more you think about it, the closer and closer, here's sin. Do I step over it or not? Uh, what most of us do is want to get as close to the edge as we can get without sinning, but it doesn't work that way. You end up over that edge. And then, then you got to repent, confess it. Well, repent, what I mean by repent is, is uh, you, you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, not that you have to do works. Because I come out of Romanism. And repentance is, is a work, and that's not what it is. It's turning to the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting him. So it's best not to get involved in sin. Don't open that Pandora's box, because it's awful hard to get closed, and it's still in your mind, whatever you got involved in. So be careful of that. So be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man. We're to do something. We're to put on the new man. It just doesn't happen. Uh, I walk along, I'm saved now, la di da God will take care of me. No, you've got to put on the new man and put off the old man with its deeds. And then Colossians, uh, that's found in Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Uh, and that you put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So you want to be renewed in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? You put on the new man. You allow him to uh, control your life. Uh, The old man is a corrupt human nature, the inborn tendency to do evil, uh, and, and that's found in all men. Romans 6.6, 6, it is the natural, not the spiritual man, but the natural man um, himself that you put off. Uh, in Ephesians 4.22 and Colossians 3.9, uh, you find positionally, uh, where we are. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, Ephesians 4.22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, what we just read, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And it, it's good to get this into your mind, because the more you get it into the, your mind, the more you're going to uh, want to avoid these things. And uh, Colossians 3.9 that we just read, also uh, about putting on the new man and putting off the old man. So it's our position that we're concerned about. Uh, this uh, reckoning... Uh, the act, reckoning means the act or process of calculating the position. So this is a reckoning of God. The old man is crucified and the believer is exhorted to make this good in his experience. It, it's taken place. Now all we got to do is apply it to our lives. Uh, by reckoning is to... Uh, be so by putting off the old man and putting on the new man. Colossians chapter 3. 
So we see in Ephesians 4.24 that we are to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So if we put on the new man, we're going to be like Christ if we apply it to our lives. So the new man is a regenerated man, uh, as, as, and also called, uh, it's distinguished from the old man or the old nature. Romans 6.6, 6, and is a new man as having become a partaker of the divine nature and life, according to 1 Peter 1, 1.4, where, where it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the uh, corruption that is in this world through lust. So we have the divine nature. Once you're born again, you're like, you can be like Christ. You have that divine nature because the old man is crucified. And remember, you were under uh, Satan's, uh, you were part of Satan's family, I'll put it that way. And John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, before you get born again. Now this is a hard saying, and, and you know, I, I, I say it very cautiously, depending on who I'm dealing with, but I, I get it in there, that if you're lost, you're in Satan's family, you're Satan's child. When you get born again, you come out of that family and you're part of the family of God because the old man is under uh, is crucified and you're no longer under its power. As a lost person, you have no righteousness, no spirituality other than Satan. And, and he controls you. Simple as that. So if you want to be under Satan's control, you stay lost. If you want to become one of God's child, children, you get born again. Uh, so you have the divine nature. Colossians 3, 3 and 4 says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. My, my old life is gone. I now have the, the uh, new man. And God, I don't know how many of you know this, but God performs an operation, Colossians 2.11. He cuts your soul away from your flesh. So you're no longer accountable for the sins of the flesh. That's what I was saying. Your body is dead. It's dead. And we're no longer under its control. But your soul, the real you, when you're born again, is cut away from the flesh. So the flesh doesn't in the desires, but the desires of the flesh are still here. And we can have a... Uh, uh, yielding to the flesh or we can yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And I always teach and preach that you, you, in order to live a holy, righteous life, you need to be yielded to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. If you're not, who's going to lead you? Who's going to guide you? Who's going to direct you? So, Again, that's why I encourage you to get into the Word of God, to read and study it, so that you know what God wants in your life, so that you know how to live a righteous, holy life, so you know how to maintain your testimony, so you know how uh, to live a life that brings honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, the old man is not made over or improved, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new, new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And Galatians 6, 15 says, For in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. That's the important thing. The new man in, in Christ is formed in the believer. You have Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Uh, 
you have uh, Galatians 4.19, Colossians 1.27, 1 John 4.12, and they all deal with the new man. And you can look those up. Uh, Romans 6.6 6 tells us we should no longer serve sin. The Bible tells us something. Are we going to obey it or not? Uh, you may have uh, a drug addiction, a drinking problem, uh, all kinds of addictions and problems that you, you may be struggling with, but, but you can get the victory over them as you yield to the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, because the body of sin is destroyed and henceforth we should not serve sin. That's simple. It's simple. It's easy to know. But doing it is a hard thing when that temptation comes. And uh, I think uh, if, if I, don't, I may cover it later, but uh, when that temptation comes in Corinthians, the Bible tells us that at that same time, we're given a way out. We make that choice. We take and enjoy that temptation or we get God's blessing and take the way out. Uh, so it's up to us. It falls on us. So the first thing in God's formula to know is, is what, uh, and that what is that your body is dead. The real you is not your body. It's that, that uh, spiritual man, the soul that's been cut away from the flesh. And that's how you begin to get the victory over whatever addiction we have in our lives. Uh, could be, could be anything. Social media addiction, video game addiction, television addiction, drug, booze, sexual, uh, anything. You can have victory over it when, when you realize this and that you are the victor already. So when your body cr cries out and craves for more sin, you must remember this. It's not you that's crying out for for whatever it is to be satisfied. Uh, it's the flesh that you're trapped in right now. And we're all trapped in this flesh until God calls us home, either through death or through the, uh, what we call the rapture. So, <clears throat> in whom ye are circumcised, like I said, Colossians 2.11, that circumcision is a cutting off. Uh, so we realize that our body was cut away from uh, our soul and we can have the victory over the things that plague us and call us. And then secondly, we're to reckon. First of all, we know our body's dead. Then we're to reckon. Uh, this is the application of what you know, uh, that you are dead. And then, then you apply that to your life. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I know I'm dead to sin. I know I'm alive to the Lord Jesus Christ. And all I have to do is be obedient. It's like being in the military. You, you do what you're told. It's simple as that. The Bible says I'm to do this. I do it. Uh, or else, you know, I, I, in rebellion against God. So we, we take that apl application, apply it to our lives. Now, when you look at a graveyard, those corpses, they don't drink, they don't do drugs, they don't gamble, they, they're not uh, sexual perverts, they're done. Uh, this is why sinners cannot get the victory over the sin until they are actually dead, if they stay in their sin. Uh, the Lord can take a believer home early and uh, because, you know, if the Lord gives you, and, and I sometimes wonder about this because, you know, how many chances have I had in the length of years that I've lived, in the life that I've lived, uh, that God's given me more chances than, than somebody else, somebody else, you know, do some, some of the stuff I did and, and they end up dead uh, at an early age. Why, is that God just watching over me, uh, wanting me to do his work, keeping me alive? Um, but I don't want to take a chance, so I avoid whatever that temptation is in, in most cases. 
so the Lord can take a believer home early. Uh, and then the third thing is to yield. Now you know your body is dead. Uh, you start applying God's word to your life, and now you have to yield. Yield to what? Just because you know you know you are dead, you apply the death. You need something to replace it, and and this is the way it is. <clears throat> uh, Danny, our song leader in Deland, his father was a drunk most of his life. He got saved, but he replaced that that booze with soda. Uh, or, or something like that. And uh, that's, that's what happens. And you have to replace it because you're not going to just eliminate it and it's going to be gone. In most cases, you have to replace it with something. Your foul language, your foul mouth, that when you, you uh, were lost, every other word was a swear word, a cuss word, that has to be replaced you cannot continue in that. And, and so you begin to yield and you begin to apply God's word to your, your life. So you fill that void uh, so that uh, you're not, you don't have that temptation drawing you back there. And verse 13, Romans 6, 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but... Continue, uh, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of uh, uh, righteousness unto God. So you yield yourselves to something alive. Think about it. You have yielded yourselves to something dead for so long, meaning your body, the deceitful lust, the old man, so why not now, as a believer, yield yourself to something alive, which is the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, uh, who is alive? Your spiritual nature. The, the fleshly nature is dead, and, and you don't want to yield to that any longer. So, <clears throat> how many uh, deadbeat Christians are there, you know? Uh, they want to make the spiritual man dead and the physical man alive. And that's what messes up their lives completely because they want to satisfy their flesh. They, they don't have a desire to serve the Lord and bring honor and glory to Him. Um, and so you must realize first that, that you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, and that power should not go to waste. It, it's a Holy Spirit in you that as you yield to Him, He'll give you the power, the grace, the wisdom to avoid sin in your life. Galatians chapter 5, uh, you ask, how do I overcome my addictions, whatever they may be, smoking, drinking, sexual, video games, music, whatever it is. All you have to do is yield to the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's the secret of it. Walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in you. Uh, yield to Him. Let Him guide and direct your life and you'll not uh, be walking in sin. You mess up and you yield uh, to the desires of the flesh, and if you don't confess that, what's gonna happen? It's gonna work on your mind, you're gonna get depressed, you're gonna feel lousy, and uh, you're just going downhill from there. But when it happens, you know, you get down, we all get down. And what I say is, I'm going to stay down. I'm going to feel sorry for myself for a few minutes. And then I'm, I'm going to get right. I'm going to confess it, get right, and say, Lord, I don't know how many times you can, you can, uh, uh, I can confess it. And you, you just keep putting me back where I belong. Uh, but he does. And uh, he mentions that. Uh, how many times do you uh confess it. He says, what, 70 times 7? And that's just an example for it. 
So uh, you, you get right, you stay right, and when you get down, you know, feel sorry for yourself for a few minutes and then get rid of it. Get back serving the Lord. Get back into the Word of God. Get back witnessing. Uh, <clears throat> now, what I want you to do is ask yourself, when's the last time you've read your Bible? When you seriously prayed? When you studied the Bible? Uh, have you been missing church? And there, there are reasons. I, I'll give you that. There are reasons that you do miss. Uh, I'm not. I'm not one of these preachers that say if you're not in church every time the doors open, you're out of God's will, and God's going to chastise you. He's going to take your kid home to be with them, and and all this stuff. That's a lot of bunk. These these are guys that are just want you to think that they're they're like the Pope, okay, basically, you know. Uh, and, and I've seen that, because I got saved in 1970, and I come up through that era where uh, <clears throat> it was like that. And uh, I, I, can, I can imitate them and give you some stories about that, but uh, we don't have the time for that. Uh, so you mess up, you, you get right, and... Uh, you continue to go on for the, uh, for the Lord, for His honor and glory. And when you do mess up, you don't blame God. You don't blame the preacher. Well, I don't like what he said, so I'm not going back there tonight. And, uh, because that, that's just the time that that message he has for you when you're not there is going to be wh exactly what you needed. So that's why I say, whenever possible, you be here when the doors are open. Uh, you don't blame your Sunday school teacher. Uh, he had some excellent points, and I don't want to go over it, but, but uh, he talking about being in control. And I teach, I preach, when I counsel, uh, one of the things I say is always remember AIO, adapt, improvise and overcome you stay in control you don't allow your emotions to control you because that's when you're going to have problems so you keep your emotions under control and uh, you'll avoid a lot of heartache in your life so We'll have no one to blame but ourselves when we, we get involved in sin. Uh, Ephesians 4:22 uh, through 29 shows us what we have to do. You have to know you're dead. You have to uh, uh, realize that in your life, and you replace it with something different when you. We, you uh, give up drinking, smoking, whatever, you replace it with something different. Don't just keep rejecting sin in your life uh, because if you haven't come to church for long periods of time, if you haven't witnessed for long periods of time, if you haven't read your Bible, if you haven't studied your Bible for long periods of time, you are going to end up in sin again. I can promise you that. Um, and if you don't uh, yield, you're going to never, never have victory in your life. You may be saved. You may be going to be with the Lord uh, when, when that time comes, but you'll never have victory in your life. So you put off the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt. You be renewed in your mind. Uh, you put on the new man. You put away lying, speaking every man the truth with his neighbor. These are things we are to do. You can be angry for the right reasons and sin not. Now, this, this is mainly for husband and wives. Uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. When you, most, most married couples are going to have some disagreements, you know, 
and the wife's usually wrong. You know that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to see how many men were here. <laughs> but no, it's usually us guys that are the jerks yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, but, but don't let the rat, uh, sun go down on your wrath because it only builds and, and you end up mad at each other and two days later you're not talking to each other. Why not? I don't know. And that's how it ends up. So, so get, it, get it over with before the sun goes down. Uh, put away lying, speak every man the truth. Uh, let him that stole steal no more. Rather, let him labor, earn, earn what you want. Let, here we go. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers. So that, that's witnessing. We're to witness to the Lord Jesus, uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. So finishing up, uh, the formula is to know, reckon, and yield. Know that your body is dead. You're no longer under Satan's control, John 8, 44. Uh, reckon it, believe it, uh, and, uh, and then uh, yield to the Holy Spirit. That's the three, three things you need to do in order to live a victorious Christian life. And you can go, if you apply these things to your life, you can go without sinning and see how long you can go. Uh, I challenge you to that. And, and I'm going to write your pastor and find out. And I'm going to write write to the Sunday school teacher. I'll write to Sue because she'll tell me uh, <laughs> who's ever involved in sin and gotten, we use the term backslidden, but that's for the Jewish nation, who's ever out of the will of God. In the New Testament age, in the age of grace, in our dispensation, you don't get backslidden, you get out of the will of God. So I'm gonna find out and then I'm gonna write you a chastising letter. So. <laughs> <laughs> and say, didn't you listen when I was preaching? Don't you know I'm a man of God? You're supposed to listen to me. You do what I say. Uh, how many of uh, you have heard preaching like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, how many of you enjoy it? N nobody. <laughs> All right. We'll close with the word of prayer. I, I really don't know. You have an invitation or? Okay. All right. However it works, uh, come on up. All right. uh, Father, we just ask you now that uh, you take what was said, use it for your honor and glory. Set, set me aside, Lord, and uh, just speak to each person here, uh, their needs, uh, what, what, whatever it is, if they need to be saved, Lord, I pray that they would, would uh, seek somebody uh, to go through the Word of God with them and show them how to be born again. And I pray for those that uh, uh, need to speak with you, Lord, uh, uh, that they would, would uh, just do as, as you've convicted them or showed them their need to do. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for what you're going to do and what you've already done. In Christ's name, amen.